Hi everybody, it's Michelle from Poochie Baby, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how I make my Sweet Dreams Baby Afghan. It's really simple to make once you get the hang of getting the stitches done. It's going to be a nice size blanket to fit great in a baby bed or on a toddler bed. And you can make it in so many different colors or so many possibilities. So let's get started. Now to begin for your supplies, you're going to need an H hook and I use clover hooks, but any H hook will be fine. You're going to need your yarn and I'm using worsted weight yarn, the Red Heart with Love yarn. I love this stuff. It's so soft and it's great to work with. I'm going to make this blanket in three basic colors. I'm going to show you guys on this gray, but I'm actually going to switch to green whenever I switch out colors because I already have that started. But I'm going to begin this and show you how to start the blanket using the gray. So I'm going to use green, white, and two different shades of purple to finish off the blanket. And they're all the same type of yarn. Make sure that you have the same consistency in your yarn. They can be different brands. Just make sure the, the weight is the same on the yarn. Now to start off, you're going to need a beginning chain of 132. And I've already done that. So you need to chain 132. And we're going to start our granny stitches on this beginning chain. We're going to make a series of valleys and peaks and it might look a little wonky when we first start off but it'll even itself out as we work. So we have 132 on the chain and we're going to double crochet in the sixth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We double crochet in there. And we put two more double crochet in the same stitch. We're going to make a cluster. So every time I say cluster, I mean three double crochet all in the same stitch. So we have our first cluster with this space here at the end. We're going to skip two stitches and put another cluster in the third. Skip two and another cluster in the third. Now we're going to make our first valley and we do that by skipping five. One, two, three, four, five. And in the sixth one, we put another cluster. So we're going to have three, every little section is going to be three clusters and then either a valley or a peak. So we have our first one here, skip two, another cluster in the third. Skip two, another cluster in the third. So we have our first section, our valley, our next section. Now we're going to make a peak here. So we do that by chaining three. And then we put another cluster in the same stitch. So three more double crochet in the same stitch. We skip two and then another cluster in the third.
skip two and another cluster in the third. So we're ready for our next valley. We have three, one, two, three clusters. So we skip five, one, two, three, four, five. And we put a cluster in the sixth. And we're going to continue to do this until we reach the end where we're going to finish this off with one of these peaks at the very end. So continue to skip two and put a cluster, skip two and put a cluster, and then we'll have a peak. Skip two and put a cluster, skip two and put a cluster, and then we'll have a valley. Continue to do that all the way until the end, and I'll be back to show you how we do that. Okay, so you can see here, I was actually off on my count. Well, no wonder. I'm going to redo this. See, that is what happens. I made two peaks in a row. You have to pay attention. Let's redo this section right here. Put another valley. One, two, three, four, five, and the sixth. Another cluster. One more cluster. We're in the very last stitch now and we're going to put a peak here. So we do a cluster of three. We chain three and another cluster of three in the very last stitch. So that is what the end of the row is going to look like.
right there. And when you first start this blanket, the very edges are going to look strange. You're going to think that you're doing it wrong, but you're not. It, it'll level itself off after about the fifth row. You'll be able to start to tell where the edge of the blanket is. And it'll be just fine. It'll look weird, but trust me, it's going to work out. So this is how the first row is done. And these little edges here are going to curl up some on you, but that'll straighten itself out once we put our final row of trim. Because I'm going to put just one row of single crochet all the way around just to kind of finish off the blanket. And it'll level all of that out. Plus, all of these spaces, these holes made by the clusters, I have a little trick that I use when I'm putting that final trim on there that I will show you guys to kind of camouflage that hole and they won't be as noticeable. So that's the first row. Okay, now that we have the first row done, let me just mention that there is a PDF tutorial for this blanket and it can be found on the website and I'll put the link to that below in the description box. And it's a picture tutorial, it's not really a traditional pattern, it's more with just photos and descriptions. So if you're not, if you're looking for a traditional pattern, this is probably not the one, but it'll explain clearly in pictures how to complete the blanket. So from this point on, once we start row two, the rest of the blanket is going to be crocheted in the exact same way. Every row will be exactly the same from this point on. And I'm going to have rows of 10. 10 in one color, switch colors, 10 in another color, switch colors. And that's just how I've decided to complete this blanket. But you can do any color combination that you choose. You can switch out every two rows, every five rows, you know, make some 10, make some two, switch it out however you want. Okay, so this last stitch here, we were at the very end. To start the next row, we're going to chain five. And then we turn. And we're going to put a cluster in this first space here. Now we're just going to continue on with our three cluster pattern. we put another cluster in the next space. We're just working in the spaces now. The space is created on that bottom row. So there's three in the, this one, three in the next, Now that we have three, this here was a valley. We're going to skip, we skip this space right here and we're going to pull this and we're going to put our next cluster in this space here. Skip this one and the next cluster goes here. Once the blanket gets larger, it's easier to work with. You just got to hang on to it really good when you're working on this first row especially. So that's one, two, three. Let's see how that looks. We skipped this one and went into this one over here. Now cluster in the next space.
So we skipped our three, this space here, put our three here. So we have three clusters here now. One, two, three. So we're going to make our next peak right here at the same area where the peak was on this row right below it. We do that by chaining three. It's the same way. Chain three and then another three double crochet in the same space. And that's how it looks. And we just continue this pattern until we reach the end of the row. With three clusters, skip this one, pull those together, and go into this next one, then three, and then another peak over here. Now we've reached the end of the second row. We just need to do this last part right here in this space down here, which you're going to have at the end of every row from now on. See how we started over here? Now we have a space there. In the space here, we're gonna put a peak. So we put a cluster of three. We chain three and another cluster of three, all in that same space. And that finishes our row. And remember, it's going to look strange. It's not going to be straight, not right away. That until you reach about the fifth row, then you'll see it starts to straighten itself out. So that's the end of the row, and we do the same thing from here on out. We chain five, one, two, three, four, five. We turn, and we put one cluster, just one, in this very first space. And then a cluster in the next. A cluster in the next. And here we have a valley. So we skip that one. And we go into this one. And put our next cluster.
Now we're coming to our next peak. So we have one cluster here. Chain three. And then another in the same. And we just continue on that way down the row and we do every row this exact same way until we reach the amount of rows that we want to complete the blanket. This blanket that I'm making is going to be 70 rows. I'm going to have a row of 10 rows of green, 10 rows of white, 10 rows of purple, 10 rows of green. I'm just going to alternate it that way and begin with green and end with green. That's how I'm going to do mine. So just continue this all the way until we reach 10 rows and then I'm going to come back with my green blanket and show you guys how I switch out my yarn and you may see me switching out colors and blankets throughout the tutorial maybe not maybe just this one time I'm making several all at the same time so there's no telling which blanket I'm going to pull out but we're going to finish this off and I will come back with the green and show you how to switch out the yarn Okay, so here is my green section of the blanket, of the other blanket that I'm working on. And see how I said, don't worry if these edges curl up on you, they are going to straighten themselves out when we put the trim on. My lighting is getting strange on me here in the video. See how these edges start to level themselves out? At about this point right here, you can start to see the edge of the blanket very nicely. And it'll look even better and straighter once we put the row of trim on there. So let's finish this out. It's the very last peak over here. Chain three and one more. Okay, so that's it for the green on this blanket. Let me snip off the yarn. And I just tie that off. And I'll take a tapestry needle and weave that in. I just don't have it right here with me to show you guys. You just put it through and just weave it through so it's not noticeable. So we're gonna turn it. I'm going to join my white yarn right here. I'm going to show you how I weave in these ends as I go along so I don't have to snip them off at the end when I'm making, finished making the blanket. So we're going to join here. I'm going to leave a long tail. Pull that through. And I'm going to double that. And I'm going to hold both these strands together and crochet them together as if they're one strand. And that way it's already woven into the blanket, that whole tail in there. Takes a little bit of practice. So we're gonna chain five because that's how we have to start every row. Two, three, four, five, and that's all I'm going to get out of that second strand. And I'll put my cluster here. And just continue on just using a new color. And I'm going to have 10 rows of white. Then I'm going to switch to this purple. Then I'm going to have 10 rows of green again, 10 rows of white again, then this purple, 10 rows of green, 10 rows of white. I guess one more row of purple and then another row of green and that's it. 
if my count is off, I'm sorry, but I don't have my paper right in front of me. I know that it's 70 rows total. So we just continue on. Seventy is a good number to do. And I'm going to complete all of that off camera. And I probably won't return back until I've reached the very end of the blanket and I show you guys how to do the trim. Let's just kind of give you an idea of what it looks like with the new color on just for a little, little part of the blanket. The chevron design is so popular now. And to me, making it in this granny style is so much easier than actually doing the solid. Because when you do the solid, you have to count all of your stitches or you lose track on your blanket. And it doesn't, and the waves or the chevron can look disrupted if you lose your count. And with this, you don't really have to count. And anytime I don't have to count, all the better. I can just look and see what I'm doing, and I can tell by the stitches below what I'm supposed to be doing on the current row instead of counting. That is why I do not like using patterns whenever I make things. I just make things up as I go. And if I do, use a pattern it has to be very easy or I write my own and I scribble my notes and I know what all my notes mean. Okay so this is how it's going to look with the white and I'm going to have 10 rows and then just keep switching out and I will be back whenever I have completed the blanket and I'm ready to put that very last row of trim all the way around the blanket. Okay, so I have finished my blanket. I decided to stop on this section of purple. So that decreases the length of the blanket by 10 rows. So I have a total of 60 rows and not 70 because it ended up being a very good size with just the 60 rows. So I have my purple, my white, my green, my other purple, white, and green. Now we're going to finish off the blanket by just doing a single row of single crochet all the way around the blanket. Okay, so I'm gonna join my white here. I will be doing the trim row in white. And I have my double strand of yarn just to get started. Let me redo that so you can sh I can show you again how I do it. I join that there and leave a long tail. And then I'm going to chain two. Remember, it takes practice while you're working with this tail. So now we're going to single crochet across. Bring that out. So now we have for every valley on this part, or actually, this part, it was a peak. With the chain three, we're going to single crochet in it first. And since this was a point, you want to single crochet twice in that just to maintain the shape of the point. We don't want to lose the shape. So just two single crochet in those. Let's move across. Right here. In this valley. We're going to do the same thing that we did here. Skip these two right here. 
skip these two and single crochet in this so it just helps to maintain the shape and you'll have to do something similar just like this at the other end of the blanket this is either the top or the bottom it doesn't make any difference So here we have our next three up here. Put one there, put two in here. One in the next. And just continue on. So we just keep doing this across the blanket and I will come back and show you how we're going to handle these corners. Now that I've reached the corner, it's done all the way across the row. This corner has that five loop. There are five chains here. So I single crochet in the first two. And the third one, I'm going to put two single crochet because that is the center of that area. And then I will just come around, start working on the side of the blanket and just single crochet across. These you can tell because it was a chain. Now this section I'm going to single crochet here, 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 and here. And here. Make sure I have yarn. Right here. There should be two single crochets for each row. And we just continue that all along the side, just the same way, making sure you have two single crochet in each row space there at the end. And when I come back, I'll show you guys how I do the other side of the blanket, the top part of the blanket, and how I kind of disguise the holes that are created when you're starting the blanket on the beginning chain how I do my little disguise stitch and cover that up. So I'm going to do this off camera and I'll be back to show you that. So now we've come to the bottom of the blanket where we had our beginning chain and these are curling up that beginning chain. It's going to level itself out and then we kind of have these holes here where the clusters are that we don't want that space showing on our blanket. So let me show you how I get rid of that, or how I disguise it, actually. Don't get rid of it. I'm single crocheting along the chain now, and I'm up to my first cluster here. So instead of going into this stitch here to do my single crochet, I hook in up here up here and do it like that and it kind of pulls that together and hides it and this is a little more challenging to crochet along this beginning chain because it's usually tighter so we had two and then here's another so I go up here
One, two, three, four, five. Here is our first peak. It was a valley on that first row. And we're going to do our double crochet, I mean, our two single crochet in that middle one. So we're going to single crochet twice in that one. Go two. And then in this third one, we'll do the two single crochet. We continue across like we did the top row. Here I come to another cluster, so I'm going to go up here. You don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. I just like to do it to hide that little space. Here's another cluster. Go up in there. This right here is a valley, so we're going to maintain the shape there. Oh, by skipping these two, it would be this one and this one. So we skip over like that. Up here. You just kind of feel your way through the blanket. You might put an extra little single crochet in there, but that's okay. Here's another five chain here that was our valley. Here I'm going to put two, and we just continue this all the way across. And then when we come to this side, we do the same thing we did on the other side. We're just making sure we put two single crochet for each row and do it all the way across and join the blanket with a slip stitch when you bring it together at that last corner and then you will be done with the blanket. I'll be back to show you everything when it's completed. Well here's the completed blanket. It has the trim row all the way around. This was the bottom row, the bottom section with the purple. This is the top section with the green. See how it kind of levels itself out once you put the trim on you don't have to worry about that curling in the way that it was curling in before only have this one tail here that I need to weave in. All the others have been woven in to the blanket as I was going along. This blanket makes a nice baby blanket, a nice toddler blanket, even a throw for a couch. You can make it in so many different colors to match your living room or to match your nursery or your toddler's room. There are a lot of possibilities. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have any questions about the blanket or how I made it, you can put it in the comments section and I will get back to you as soon as possible. You guys have a great day and I will see you next time.